Hey guys, Chad Trofgerbin here, back for another quick and easy Flash tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain and demonstrate how to apply special effects to um, symbols in Flash. So, the first thing you need is a symbol on your stage. So you'll have your symbol sitting right here, and I have mine right here. The next thing you're going to need is the symbol to be a movie clip. So you can make them graphics, or buttons, or movie clips. Just make sure that your symbol is a movie clip, and if you click on the symbol and then go to your properties, you can check to make sure it is a movie clip, or you can change it to a movie clip by checking this drop-down menu right here. So once you have a symbol and it's a movie clip, we'll direct our attention down here to the filters box right down here. If we go and click on this icon right here, we have the ability to add a filter. So if we click that, we have a whole list of different things we can do here. So uh, let's just select one of these and see what it does. I'll click on blur first. So I'll click on blur. You'll notice that our symbol becomes slightly blurred. And if we come down here to our filters box, you'll see that we have a few options here that we can play with. First of which, let's go ahead and change the quality to high. When we do that, the blur does change slightly. It becomes a little bit more blurred, actually, and it looks a little bit more, it looks better, which is why it's a higher quality. And if we come down here to our blur and X and Y axis, you'll see that we can go and adjust this number right here. Right now it's at five, but if we place our cursor here, and holding our mouse button down and we drag it to the right, you'll notice as we drag it to the right the number increases as well as the blur effect on the stage. And if we bring it back we can also reduce the blur effect. This is obviously um, useful if for instance you want to do like a focus effect like of a camera focusing in on someone or if in the background you have something in the background that you don't want to be as detailed as the foreground stuff, that's where you would find some use for an effect like this. Or if you just want to do a cool blur effect, there's always that too. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm just going to click this blur effect right here and then hit the trash can to delete it. So we can go ahead and add another effect to this. And you can add more than one effect to a symbol. I'm just going to delete this so things will get confusing. And you can actually combine effects for a great deal of success. I mean, you can you know combine blur and glow effects to create something really cool. So keep that in mind. Anyway, let's go ahead and click our Add Filter button again and see what else we have here. Let's go ahead and try the Drop Shadow one. So go ahead and click that. And once we do this, you'll see that we have a slight shadow right under the right side of the drawing. Well if we come down here we can once again adjust our options. The first of which I'm going to adjust is the high to low quality setting. I'll just change it to high. And once we do that a little more depth comes into the shadow. It's not very noticeable but it's a little bit noticeable. And again we can do the blur X and Y stuff right here so we can make the shadow more or less dominant as you can see as I'm adjusting it like that. And if we come down to here, let's go ahead and try the distance once. With the distance, it's the same approach as the um, as the blur. If you move it right, you know it increases. If you move it left, it decreases. So let's click our mouse button down, hold and drag to the right. And as we do this, you'll notice that the shadow becomes more and more detached from the drawing. So it mimics the symbol, but it just becomes more and more distanced from it. So this is obviously good if you're trying to establish a certain kind of shadow that you want. And of course, if we come up here, holding down our mouse button and adjusting, we can adjust the angle of this as well. So depending on your light source, for instance, if you have a light source somewhere, you can mimic the shadow to correspond to that. Also, if we come down here, we have a couple of other options. The first of which, 
I'll show you is you can adjust the shadow color if you choose to. So if you click this button right here, you can make it a green shadow if you cho chose to. If you click the knockout um, box right here, that disables the symbol, but it keeps it in there. So it looks like it's, you know, there's like a, I guess a shadow of itself in the shadow, basically. Just deselect that. If we go to inner shadow, you'll see that that changes the shadow to be like inside the actual symbol, not outside of it. And the hide object hides the object, object completely, so you just have the shadow itself. It's sort of like knockout, except it actually hides it, and not just knocks out the um, symbol within where the sh where it's overlapping the shadow, basically. Okay, let's go ahead and check out one more effect for this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and just come over here to my drop shadow and click that, and then hit the trash can right here to delete that. So we can kind of see this effect without any other effects in the way. Now I'm going to come down here and click the add filter icon and I will choose adjust color. Adjust color is pretty cool because it allows you to do some subtle things to your symbol or actually you could even go and do some extreme stuff with it too. So uh, let's check this out. We have four options here. The first of which is the brightness. So if we bring our cursor over here and click our mouse button down and drag to the right and as we do this you'll see that we are adjusting well the brightness of the symbol which is actually if we go all the way to 100 it almost looks like it completely like drowns the colors out completely so that's kind of a cool thing because you could do some pretty cool you know artistic effects with this if you chose to or you can go the opposite way and make it dark you know to make it look like he's under a, I don't know under a tree or something a big tree that has a shadow Next is the contrast, so we bring this to the right. Again, this kind of knocks out some of the colors to bring us, you know, a higher contrast, as a, you know, and then you go to a lower contrast. And then if we, I'll just bring that back to zero. Saturation saturates the colors to bring them out, you know, even further, as opposed to if you go all the way to um, a negative 100, you have black and white, which again could be used for some cool effects. And finally, we have the hue down here. Bring that up, and that kind of changes our look completely to something completely else. And if we go back, it does kind of the same thing. He kind of looks sick, actually. <laughs> so, and of course, you can combine these too. I mean, if you bring your hue to 70, and then you go your brightness to, you know, 45, and you take your contrast to this, I mean, you can completely alter the look and the colors of the symbol itself. And if you combine this with other, you know, symbols like the, I mean, with other effects like the blur effect and the glow effect or the drop shadow, you can, as you can see, come up with some pretty different ideas here for how symbols look. Okay, well, that does it for this tutorial. If you would like to see more tutorials, check out my website, IncredibleFlashTutorials.com. And if there's a tutorial that's not on there that you would like to see, go ahead and send me an email. You can contact me right on the site, and I might just do that tutorial in the future. So, okay. Well, I hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.